Now it is time to start building the form. Everything up until this point has been easy and elementary, and this is actually the most difficult part of the whole thing. As typical with the first design, the focus isn't on how easy it will be to build, just the design. And following that rule, I did not make this thing easy to build, and there was a lot of discovery in the process. I had to cut and splice together 85 different videos, totaling 4 hours, 14 minutes of actual video time. So here we go, starting with the 3D model and how the form goes together. Here is the form viewed from the top, which is actually the bottom side of the bench. The structure on the top is what allows forming of the outer walls. Rotating around to the other side, you can see where I have a reinforcing strap across the back to ensure that that panel stays straight. And rotating around to the bottom side of the form, we can see two more reinforcing straps to make sure the bottom of the form stays flat. The bottom of the form is actually the top of the counter. Rotating around back to the top and then zooming in to the lower left corner, we can see a yellow plug. There are four of these plugs and they create the channel where the bolt will go through where the legs are installed. Rotating around, we can see a blue plug. This forms the hole for the faucet, and just next to that and actually above it is a disc. This disc is what will hold the anchor bolts that will be inset into the concrete. Now looking at one of the front corners is a cove that I printed on my 3D printer. Actually, the yellow and the blue plugs also came from my 3D printer. This cove allows for a nice rounded corner at the front edges of the countertop. And here is a gray plug glued to the base of the form. This plug forms a drainage channel right down the middle of the countertop. That's the quick summary of the form, and now let's get to showing how it is assembled. Before I get into building the form, I'm going to show how it is assembled. First, the back goes on along with five screws. This forms the backsplash of the counter. Rotating around to the top, the plug for the faucet hole is attached to the base. Then the disc that holds the sink anchor screws is attached to the plug for the sink opening. The next part is the front and its three screws. And now both the left and right sides. The two coves drop down into the corners and they will be held in place with double sided tape. The four plugs for the leg screws are pushed into the holes in the lower form. Then the lower form assembly is dropped down into the base and the leg screw plugs are pulled out and inserted into the holes in the sides. The lower form and the anchor screw disc will be put in place only after the form is half full of concrete. So, that is the form, and now it's time to get down to the arduous journey of building this thing. Starting the build, I have already laminated two pieces of one half inch MDF for the base. This is going to be the top surface of the countertop, and I want it to remain as flat as possible. Also laid out on the workbench is what will be the front panel. I am using up as much of my remnant cutoffs as possible to keep the cost down. I did not have anything 48 inches long, so I am laminating a few pieces together. Now showing how I am going to get nice smooth radiuses in the corners. I made a template at the proper diameter and will position the template using a couple of boards on the straight edges and then use a router with a guide bit to trim it off. It appears that the video cutting the corners was lost. For laminating the front panel, I already have three boards butt edge glued together with biscuits and will laminate another three boards on top, making sure the butt edge joints are not adjacent to each other, making a nice strong board. Here are most of the subcomponents for the lower form. Missing here are the back, the top, and the plug for the sink opening. At the front are the three braces. Two will be under the base of the form and the other for the splash on the back side of the form. Don't pay any attention to that glue up sitting on the plywood. It is not part of this project, but the board for the splash is sitting underneath it. And leaning up against the wall of my remnants is the base of the form. 
Then over here on the carpenter's bench I have the glue layup for the top that goes on the back of the form. Unfortunately, the top edge of the back was not square, resulting in misalignment of the board for the top. I got out my very old 90 degree sanding jig to chew up that edge. Simple process is to just take a pencil and mark lines across the edge for the length of the board, then using the 90 degree sanding jig, sand until all the lines are removed. This ensures removing the least amount of material to square up that edge. Alternatively, I could put it on my small joiner planer, but I hesitate to run plywood through it. It can be hard on the blades. The braces on the bottom of the base will be screwed in from the other side, but to ensure they are installed straight, I will first temporarily install them from the bottom. The intent of these braces is to serve both as a spacer and to keep the base as flat as possible as this will be the countertop surface. For each brace, I marked two lines on the bottom of the base. One of them is the center line and the other is an offset to the edge of the brace. Since I will not be able to see the center line, the mark on the edge ensures it is placed straight. On the drill press, I drilled through the depth of the brace in two places and then installed long screws to hold the base making sure it is lined up with the edge mark. Once I match drilled each brace to the base, I labeled them F for front and R for rear to make sure they get installed in the correct locations. I also marked and drilled the holes for the five mounting screws from the bottom side. Once the two braces were attached with the long screws from the bottom, I flipped the assembly over, drilled pilot holes and countersunk the five attachment screws for each brace. Then taking it all apart again, applied glue and reinstalled making it permanent. All of the other small screw holes seen here are what I used to hold it together when I laminated the two one half inch MDF boards together. Now that the bottom braces are installed, it is time to attach what I am calling the splash to the back side of the form. I call it the splash because it forms the surface that will be the backsplash of the countertop. The backsplash is a part of the counter that stops water from going off the back of the counter. At this point in the construction process, I was looking at the assembly to determine the best way of attaching the splash to the base. Here's where I'm showing how everything is lined up. Two boards clamped on top of the splash keeps the top edge of the splash aligned with the base of the form. Just so that you can understand the orientation of the form on the bench, the top surface of the form we're looking at will be the top surface of the counter, and the far edge of the form will be the front of the counter. While looking at this, I came to the conclusion that the best thing I could do to locate the splash on the base would be using 5 3 8 dowels. I will drill through the face of the splash and into the base, ensuring all the dowels are exactly where they need to be. But before I go any further, I have to ensure that the back edge of the base is square. I will do that the same way I did previously with a pencil and my 90 degree sanding jig. The edge is sanded square and all the dowel holes are drilled. Now a small dab of glue on each dowel and tap them into place. When all the dowels are in, I wipe the edge with a damp rag to remove any glue bleed out as this could prevent the splash from seating properly. Now to check the fit, I attach the alignment boards and install the bar clamps. Using my calibrated finger, I confirm the edges are flush on the side and across the top. All is ready to glue up the splash and I already have two beads of polyurethane glue applied. I put the board in place, install three temporary screws and two bar clamps and all that's left is waiting for it to set up. The screws are temporary because that corner is going to get a large radius cut into it. They will be removed once the glue is cured. No! All done attaching the splash and I found an error. The left side edge should have been flush with the edge of the base and now I have to fix it. After pondering the easiest way to do that, I found that, coincidentally, my large mixing sticks are exactly the right size. I will spread a bunch of glue on this used stick, clamp it in place, then trim it to size. I put the mixing stick in place and marked the profile where the glue needs to be applied. Just off camera, I'm applying boxing tape to my backup board so any glue bleed out will not glue the clamp to the base. 
apply the glue, a little water, put in place, and clamp. Now time for a break while this sets up. Now it is time to build the back. The back is essentially a Z-shaped section and serves to form the back and top surface of the counter. It will be screwed to the base and the sides to make it easier to break the counter out of the form. First I am positioning the top. Lightly clamped at both ends, I use a board and small hammer, tapping it until it is flush with the back. Once I am satisfied that everything is flush on both ends, I use my countersink drill to put two screws in, one on each end. Then I will ensure that the center of the joint is flush, then drill and install one screw in the middle. Now the board will be straight all the way across and I will drill and install two more screws. With all the pilot holes in place, I can now take it apart, apply construction adhesive, and screw it back together. I will repeat this procedure to install the brace on the opposite side of the back. The brace is there to strengthen the back and make sure it stays straight. The back is assembled and here it is with my first test fit to the base. Across the back is the brace that keeps it straight. I have three temporary spacers holding it the correct distance from the splash. The corner of the splash to the base is going to have a one inch outside radius cut into it, but I don't have that bit yet. I've also been thinking about how I'm going to put two inside radiuses on the corners that will be the top of the backsplash. I am thinking that forming the cove on the back should be simple since those are glued together, but uncertain about the cove between the back and the splash since those are screwed together. At this point I was considering plaster of Paris to mold the cove on the back, and now to take it apart and get it set up for a test. Now that I have the back removed from the base and some plaster of Paris mixed up for the test, I slop some down in the corner and then form the radius using a 19 mm socket as a tool which has a 1 inch outside diameter. I was pleased with the size of the radius so I mixed up a larger box of plaster and filled in the entire corner. Now I'm off to make myself a custom sanding tool on my 3D printer based on the diameter of the socket. Here's my new custom sanding tool. This gets right down to the cove as well as sanding the two faces, removing some of the plaster that bleeds around the socket. After sanding, we can see there are some low spots. These are the darker areas. I'm going to finish up sanding the entire length and then apply a skim coat over the top to even everything out. After sanding the entire cove and inspecting, we can see numerous low spots as indicated by the darker shades. I was ready to mix the plaster for the skim coat, then started thinking about using that socket as the tool. The plaster had a tendency to bleed around the edges of the socket, forming ridges that had to be removed and sanded. Then it occurred to me that I might be able to use the sanding tool as the application tool. I put a layer of boxing tape on the tool to make the surface very smooth, which was much easier than sanding the, down the tool. I anticipate that the wings of the tool will eliminate the ridges. This is the first time using the sanding tool. I apply a small bead of plaster along the center of the cove. Then holding the tool at just a slight angle, I pull it along the cove. It worked great, leaving an almost perfectly feathered edge. Actually, better than expected. Now it is time to start working on the outside cove on the base. There was a lot of tear out of the plywood when I cut the cove. So much that I had to fill the whole edge with filler. In this case, I used plaster of Paris. In fact, the entire face of that plywood is going to have to be filled. But for now, I am focusing on the cove and I printed another custom sanding tool which, of course, was also used to apply the plaster. 
After reviewing previous videos, I noticed that the camera position had me blocking the scene. A novice mistake that I hope to not make again. Using 100 grit paper on my custom sanding tool, it makes quick work on the plaster, leaving a perfectly formed cove. Reviewing my progress, I'm showing most of the components, including some 3 inch spacer blocks that I will use to make sure all four sides are at the same height. Also shown here are two orange outside forms for the corners of the countertop. The blue parts are the sanding jigs. I found that I needed to cut some slots in the sides to accommodate clamps. On one end of the right side, I cut it in the wrong spot and had to glue the plug back in place to recut it after the epoxy is set. Coming up is what I did for attaching the two ends and the front. Remaining parts to make are the plug for the sink, the plug for the faucet, and the upper form for the walls. Also need to make the cove for the splash. Always remember to measure twice when cutting, and then a third time after the first cut was made when cutting multiple pieces. Trust me, it will save you headaches like this. I cut these five 3 inch blocks as spacers to ensure all four sides are at the same height. During inspection of the form, I came across a variance indicating that the back was not square. The right side as we're viewing it was 1 16th inch taller than the left side. I spent some time measuring everything trying to find out what was cut incorrectly. It could have been the back or it could have been the splash. Frustrated that I could not find the variance, I measured the blocks and found that they were not all the same. This was a result of my new bandsaw requiring adjustment to the guide bearings and to zero the scale. Above is a link to the bandsaw adjustment video and I will also include the link in the description. I took all the blocks over to the belt sander and carefully sized them all to within 20 thousandths of an inch, which is less than 1 32nd inch difference, and this is more than accurate enough for this project. Now as we can see, placing a straight edge across the blocks, this side is now correct. Here we're looking at the work in progress for how the sides will be attached to the base. Using 3 H dowels on the back, the base, and the front to locate each of them, and then using cabinet screws to attach them. I didn't think the MDF would be hard enough to reliably hold the screws, so I inset hardwood dowels in each screw position and will match drill pilot holes for the screws through the side. I will do the same thing for the screws in the front. And now a quick review of the base form. On the right side is the back. This will form the top surface of the splash, and this would be the back surface of the counter. This piece here is a brace keeping the back straight. Looking at the bottom of the form, we can see two braces that served as a stand as well as keeping the bottom flat. And over on the other end is the part that forms the front surface of the splash. I had to add support because the mounting screws ended up too close to the edge of the plywood and I'm certain they would not have held, splitting the plywood. The last part of this chapter, we're seeing the form base fully assembled, including the two plugs for the sink and faucet. The plug for the sink is two pieces of MDF laminated together. I cut these out with a router and circle jig. The plug will be permanently attached to the base, and later I will add a fillet around it. The plug for the faucet was made on my 3D printer. The one shown here is not the one that was eventually used. This was a single straight plug, but later I decided I wanted a radius at the top of the counter which required a two-piece plug. An image of that plug is shown up here in the corner. I'm also going to mold a drain channel into the countertop surface. This was cut from a piece of three-quarter poplar. I cut a cove on the two corners and then cut the taper on the bandsaw. This should provide a drain for excess water on the countertop to flow into the sink. The base form is more or less complete, and coming up in the next installment of this series will be the building of the inner form which forms the walls of the countertop. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified when new content is uploaded.